Welcome to our basically misled. Yep, our podcast basically misled. I'm Dagny. And I'm Day. We give advice. 50% is life changing, 50% will leave you crying in a stairwell by the end of the day. You decide which is which. Come procrastinate with us while we chatter endlessly about things you could probably just Google. So, this is our dating episode. Yep, this is the dating game episode. Are we good at dating, Dagny? Well, clearly I'm amazing at dating. And clearly I'm not. <laughs> what do you mean? I think you're you're great at, you know, those, like, classic Tinder pickup lines. I am? Well, see, I'm good at making them up and you're good at typing them up. Oh, yeah. And sending them you're to people. really good at um, coming up with them for me. Yes. Um, any future Tinders, I made them up all myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm now single, by the way. Yippee. It's a good thing. Um, <laughs> Today's ready to go. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. But, because I know in a previous episode I did say I was in a relationship. That has ended. I'm still in a relationship. Dagny has Thank not God. broken up with her girlfriend yet, or been broken up with. Um... So, obviously, she's good at the dating game. Yes. And it's just things like this line that I can come up with for you if you need help. Do you remember this line I once gave you? It's if you're like, what should I talk about with this guy? Mm -hmm. You just ask them, what do you think of decorations that can also be used as deadly weapons? Yeah. Wall decorations. Wall decorations. And, you know, I ask people on Bumble about this okay so bumble has that weird time thing on it where you have to respond to the match within 24 hours you being the female or if it's same sex i think it can go either way and then the person has to respond to you within 24 hours so for this first person i asked which i thought would get an answer like it's a good question it's a great question no response 24 mm-hmm. hours went by, they're gone. Now I matched with them on Tinder, so maybe I should use that same line and ask them again. I think that'd be too much, though. I'm just freaking <laughs> them out majorly. Right? But, like, that's what my second aim is to do. Creep people out. Okay, sure. But I asked another person, and they seemed into it, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Now I'm not talking to that person anymore, so they were a dud. But <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> it is what it is. That that's how I do the dating game, I guess. Yeah. I guess right now I would say that you're really you're doing kind of the hookup game. Yeah, it's I would not classify it the dating game. I'm not doing the dating game either. No. I'm you're dating. The, you're the relationship. I'm the relationship game. Yeah. Although I don't know how much well, it's a little bit of game. You're, like, pre-gaming the dating game. Uh-huh. With the hookup game. Right. That's not how you use pre-game at all. No, but I really like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm pre-gaming the dating game. Yeah. I'm into that phrasing. I'm mm-hmm. gonna write it down. Okay. I'm pre-gaming. <laughs> My mother would be so proud. <laughs> well, yeah. You have gone on... A couple of dates. Yeah. Recently. So there's that. One. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Gone on one date recently. I will tell you listeners, I am not a person who's been on very many dates in my life. I went on one date in high school that was... It was good as far as dates go, I think. Like, it was fine. It was just so awkward. And, Yeah. And then I went... I mean, I think it really says something that you think it's good as far as dates go. (laughs) When in my recollection, you were basically uncomfortable the entire time and ready to leave. Yes, but like, we went to a movie. It was nice. We talked about Star Wars after, while I frantically waited for my mom to pull up. (laughs) (laughs) It was great! Um, yeah. And then I went on... I went on a date in November... Mm-hmm. That was interesting, I guess. Um, and then I recently went on a date, what, a week ago? Mm-hmm. 
And that was, that I think was the best one yet, as far as my side of things go. Like, I was good, I was talkative, I asked questions back. <laughs> That's a good thing. I focused on them. Um, I wasn't necessarily leaning away from them the entire time, hoping they wouldn't touch me. But I also wasn't into him, so. Now tell me, Day, were you yourself? I was, maybe too much. Too much yourself? Too much. He, I think, found me intense. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, he He, used the words, I am intense. He told you that you were intense and also seemed to think that you would somehow corrupt him with your gossiping ways. Yeah. He was like, kept saying, this happened at least three times where he would say something like, oh my, she's into gossip. And she, um, like, is in, I wasn't, I didn't say I was into drama or I don't remember what the other things he was saying, but like, he's like, oh, she's into gossip. Yeah. I don't know if I should get into this, but like, I'm really intrigued. In a good way. (laughs) And I'm just like, that makes me think it's not good. Or like, why do you need to tell me you're like really into like how I'm like doing? Oh yeah, he'd also like just be shocked by statements I would make. Like where I told him, now this could, who don't like blow up at me over this statement, guys. But I said that new seasons was better than whole foods and i was being serious because i think so didn't he tell you that was a bold statement yeah he was like that's such a bold statement and i'm like it's the truth and he's like there you go again i'm like no 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 dude it's the (laughs) truth i guess this is for someone who doesn't shop at whole foods but to me that seems like a very mild statement they're very similar stores right i just like have a favorite one And I, oh, one time, I'm sorry to all you people that go out into the woods, but I called you guys idiots. (laughs) Because there are some idiots that go out there. And so I was like, oh yeah, why would you go out into the woods? It's a bunch of idiots out there. And he's like, whoa. And he's like, it's true, but like, that's bold. I'm like, it's the truth. I like how he agrees, but also thinks it's too bold to be stating. Right? So basically, Day, you're you're too bold on your first date. <laughs> I guess so. I came off a little too intense. But let me say, this wasn't like... I met this guy on Bumble. And this wasn't like most of the Bumble encounters I have. Because mostly it's like talking for a couple of days, then we either meet up or we don't. You know, it's not a lot of, like, talking and asking and, like, getting to know each other. Because I would rather do that in person, usually. But this guy, we texted for a solid week. And then went out on a date. And he just, like, kept asking me these questions. So I feel like he already knew most of, like, the stuff I would have talked about on the date. So then, like, I was like, what do I have to do? Like, just be myself. (laughs) Like, be like that. Yeah. I think that's why you just, you're you're more comfortable in in the pregame. I really am. Because if people try to get to know you, then you have an issue with it. (laughs) Yeah. You think people are asking too many questions? And I'm like, why do they need to know this? Why do they need to know what my favorite color is? Or like, just genuinely trying to get to know you. And I'm like, what is your game here? (laughs) I'm very suspicious of people who just want to talk to me. Yeah. I don't know why that is. But, I mean, yeah. So that was my most recent date. And honestly, I think it was successful because I was like, oh, it's not hard. Or maybe not hard is the right word, but like I was freaking out. You were. Beforehand. Freaking out. So much. It was like hours of panic. (laughs) And then I go on the date and it's fine. I think it's very natural. I think it's hard not 
to be but nervous. I think I take it a bit extreme because I haven't been on that many dates. Or, like, the last date I was on before this wasn't that great, I think, because I just kept talking, but not about myself because I don't talk about myself. I talk about other things or, like, the people we know in common. I just started yapping about that. <laughs> and yapping it away. wasn't good, I don't think, because of that. So... You know, this was a good practice for me. Mm-hmm. And I'll, like, continue to pregame while I maybe have one or two practices <laughs> of the real dating. Also, for the record, I am actually probably terrible at the dating game. My dating game is, hey, want to go out on a date? That's my whole system. After months of being into them. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks and for not, adding that. You're welcome. Not being able to, like, say their names to your friends, you know. Just gonna do that. Throw that in there. Barely speak to them. Oh, yeah. Barely speak to them. Move away from them when they come close to you. <laughs> yeah. That's but that's hey, my game. But hey, your method worked. Yeah, you that's just right. just ask somebody on a date. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way to do it, I think. It doesn't matter... What gender you are. Like, you know, if it's a traditional heteronormative type of thing, like I would be in, it's like usually the guy who like asks out the girl. But I feel like that doesn't have to be the case. We should break those even more. Yeah. So Not that I, I would do it that. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so this is the day if I see you and you are, you know, doing the classic move away, not speaking mm-hmm. to them, you know, the yeah. usual. If you see me stuff. actually being into someone, I'm going to make you ask them out. Make me ask them out. Because generally I haven't been into someone in that sort of way to where I would be put in a position where I want to ask them out. I haven't been in that here yet. Mhm. Maybe this is the year. <laughs> But, but see, I would doubt that you would, like, think that you had a real chance with them, and that's oh, why you wouldn't ask oh, them out. Oh, yeah. 100% <laughs> I would doubt that. But I need to co- stop thinking about that, because every single person that I've been like, oh, I can never get with them, I at least match with them. Mm-hmm. So they're actually interested in me in some capacity, which is so bizarre to me. Yeah. But so, yes, please push me. I will. Yeah. Yeah. So far, most of your dating has been through Tinder. Yeah. Tinder's been the main one I've been using. Because I've been using that since April. And now it's September. Yeah. yeah. So, like, five let's, months? Let's tell, let's tell your, your first actual Tinder experience. Oh, the first one before I met up with anyone. Before you met up with anyone. Ah, freshman year, man. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to give an encounter? Yeah, of that? I'm just gonna tell. I'm just gonna set it up, okay? Please do. So, day had been hanging out with this guy, Sam, for a while. This was like a like a, a few months earlier. It never really went anywhere. It was definitely like trying to be more than friendly but it was just pretty friendly most of what it was it was a little confusing it was a little confusing i just think in the end you weren't into it oh at all and so that was the issue is that you just weren't <laughs> into it at all yeah. but so anyway and then we're messing around on tinder because this is the point this is like spring quarter freshman year so a couple of our friends have also gotten a ten like a Tinder, but it's mostly just been kind of messing around. Like people right. haven't been really meeting up with anyone seriously. And it's just the whole like, hey, did you know if you get a Tinder and you like have pictures of yourself on there, like people will try to sext you? Whoa. What is Ev- this? Everyone's trying to sext you. <laughs> so I think we we're just like like, hmm, look at this. So then there's this guy. Also named Sam. <laughs> yep, this is the second Sam, okay? This is So this is the second Sam. This is a different guy, also named Sam. And he starts trying to sex Day while we're all hanging out together. And Day just starts going for it. But of course, we're all just 
it's just kind of ridiculous because I just wonder what people would think if they knew that in fact it was just like there was, was three, three of us, of right? Us. There's just three of us just laughing at this conversation as we like get this guy off. <laughs> And I yeah. say we because Day was like, what do I say? And then I was like, well, I have some ideas. And I'd be like, tell them to me. <laughs> Give me all of what I should be saying right now. Yeah. The guy, like, he, I just, I remember him really needing me to assure him that I was going to keep my Tinder open so I could message him back right away when he responded to me. Do you remember no, that? No, I don't remember that. He was like, keep this chat open. And then, like, I didn't respond to that. And he's like, okay, but keep this chat open. And <laughs> I was like, okay, I will. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a very interesting experience. Just, I don't know. It was the first time I sexted someone. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're good at sexting now. Probably, probably. I don't know. Did you, how much did you, did you know? Because I was telling you what you could say. And then you were basically word for word saying what I told you. Yeah. To this guy. Yeah. But what, like, would you have been able to, like, say stuff like that, do you think? And you just, like, didn't want to, like, do it? Or did you actually not really know what to say? See, I think... If I hadn't had you the first time, like I would, I knew what to say, but I didn't know how to exactly phrase it, I don't think. So the first time I would have done it, I would have royally messed up. Because I would like say things the wrong way. Because I still do that. Um, what does say things the wrong way even mean? Like phrase them wrongly. Like, not artfully? Is that even yeah. a concern when you're sexting someone? Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> I have to be good at it. Um, and I think I would have been able to do it, though. Like, I would have been able to. Well, I was very young in that world at that time. I was a little naive about those things. But I think it was, like... Technically, so wise. She'll just tell me what to say. I still think I would be good at sexting. I mean, yes, yeah. it's like pretty much directly lifted from all my fan fiction experience right. reading Dirty Talk. But I still think I could be good at it. But I think it's it's because I I'm I can do it in such a detached way. That's why you're good at helping it's, me with my Tinder stuff. It's like a creative endeavor. Yeah. But, yeah. That guy... Oh, he said thank you at the end as well. Yeah. <laughs> he was real appreciative. And I was kind of just like, that was fun. I know. I kind of felt bad because I'm like, what? what it, like, he thinks he's just talking to a girl that's, like, enjoying herself. With him. Right. But no. <laughs> no, it was three girls laughing at what he was saying to us. It's actually, like, not very nice. No. <laughs> at all. And then... So that, like, happened during the week at some point. And then I got a text from him, like, a couple of days later while I was in yeah. class. And he just was like, hey. And then I kind of laughed and was like, oh, coming back for more. And then unmatched him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, buddy, you think you're getting more out of this? Uh-uh. I mean, online dating has been good. It's been for good you, for me. Because otherwise, how would you meet people? Right. You've definitely had a lot. Because I know a lot of people have, like, a lot of criticisms toward, like, meeting people on Tinder. Mm-hmm. And it can be sketchy. You know? Because, like, do you really know who you're getting? Mm-hmm. Or, like... I have a... I, apparently, I have a thing with voices. So, like... If a guy comes over and I'm not into his voice, then I'm kind of just like, eh, about the experience a little bit in general, which of course I should, I should just tell you guys to stop talking. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, um, and that's one of the things that you don't know with Tinder 
Unless you're gonna like have a phone call with them or like if you use Snapchat to like videos where you talk to them, which I'm not into that sort of thing. Talking in videos, what? <laughs> um, and so there are things like that I've like had guys come over and then been a little bit surprised about the way they actually look or like their height or their voice. But I'm sure they're the same with me. You know? Yeah. I have many guys comment about my height. I think it might be a little surprising how short I am. Yeah. I've heard you say in the past that if you want to start actually dating someone seriously, you wouldn't want to find them on Tinder. Probably not, no. Because, I don't know. It's like a fine way to meet people, and I think I've, like, met a lot of interesting people and had good conversations with guys, but I don't, I mean, I guess I'm just a little bit more cautious of people, like, and what their real intentions are when they're on Tinder. So, if I meet someone in person, then it's a little better. Also, I can, like, get to know them in person. Maybe before we start a relationship. Of course, I say that all. And yet I never seem to be around the guys that I'm into. Or enough to like have a conversation. And it's nice with Tinder. Because you swipe right. They swipe right. You're like, oh, you're into me. I'm into you. Sweet. Right, so you have that reassurance. Yeah, whereas in person... You're like, oh, it's the hot guy coming. Like, oh, what do I do? What do I say? Do I look good? You know, (laughs) (laughs) all things that go through my mind. And then you're like, oh, they're like hardly talking to me right now. Oh, they're not into me. Or like, they're being nice, but like, I don't know if it's really because they're just being nice or if they're like into me, you know? Right, and I guess Tinder is a certain context of knowing that people are looking for something dating-wise, but anyone in person could just be, who knows what their deal is, they're just a human out walking out there, like anything could be going on, whoa. They could be dating somebody, they could be not into anybody, they could be a criminal, they could... Yeah, people on Tinder could be a criminal. I know, they could be not into people with your hair. Like, right? They might not be into the fact that I wear glasses. Or my ethnicity, you know? You're just hideous, so sometimes people <sighs> might be put off by that. You know, I've been told that I'm quite nice mm-hmm. and I have a wonderful smile to add me. Yeah. So your words do not hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. That old guy liked our smiles today, you know, like... Oh my god, I swear, nobody, like, men don't talk to me unless I'm with you, and then then they're like, oh, such nice girls, and I'm like, what? When, when has it, other than today, when has a guy talked to both of us? I think it's definitely happened at least once before. What? We go into we go many public places together, and it's happened before. I feel like people are just like more friendly. <laughs> Dagny thinks it's because of my boobs. Yes, I do. <laughs> Which it might be. I don't know. I mean, I get the old men who comment on my smile all the time. See exactly. Except it's not all the time. It's because it's, you have that look when people are like, you know, in Criminal Minds, when they're like, oh, they're killing pretty brunettes. That's your look. That's pretty not with my the boobs. Look. People like it. <laughs> it's just the boobs and the hair. It's, it's the, not probably the, the makeup. Pretty. It's my makeup is done today. I look wonderful. <laughs> I think it helps. Yeah. Okay, Dagny, I have a question for you. Cause you do. I obviously oh, no. don't really know what my life is um, mm-hmm. and what I'm doing. Oh, that's good. I, I know what your life is. Okay. It's all written down in a small book I have. Oh, With dates and everything. That's times. what you keep writing in everywhere we go. Yeah. 
Hmm, I was wondering about that. It's your life story. Um, publish it when I'm famous. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so, what is the dating game, really? What is the dating game? Okay. Yeah, what is it? Explain I like it to, to me. I do like to use the phrase the dating beca- game because I feel like there's dating and then there's the dating game. Right. If you're dating, you're trying to get to know a person to have like a deeper relationship, mm-hmm. to do whatever, just to be close with people because humans like to be close to people. Like whatever yeah. you're going towards, it's whatever. That's dating. But see, the dating game is to not be too bold when you see them the first time. The dating game is to not come on too strong. It's to play hard to get. Stuff like that. That's all to me falls under the category of the dating game. Right. And I actually feel like we don't play it too much. You do a little bit because the dating game is not to open a Snapchat right away. When all of your Tinder boys send you a Snapchat, you don't open it right away Mm -mm. because they can't know. They can't know. I see it right away. (laughs) Yep. That's true. I do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess you're right. Like not being too bold or too intense because I feel like it's hard for me to play those kind of games when I already know who I am. I know who they want me. I know who I want them to know me as. So why not go right full force into it? (laughs) And I don't know. I, I don't know if I play hard to get that much. I'm very easy going <laughs> when it comes to Tinder, guys. You know. Yeah. yeah. But. The dating game is to not reveal political opinions that you realize absolutely conflict with the person. I guess, in a way, I play a game because I don't reveal my true self. In a, I feel my... Reveal my outward self, but it's very hard to kind of, like, crack in and, like, get to know. I don't know if that's playing the game or just, like, revealing. Hiding stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think hi- hiding stuff is different. If you're just yeah. hiding stuff because you're waiting for someone to know you better before right. revealing stuff, that's it's different. Creating more trust, I guess. Right, but it's like if you're, if you're, if you're revealing things about you towards the angle of them mm. liking you on a shallow level. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's an angle. I do do that sometimes. And I feel like when a lot of people give advice about dating, that's what they're giving advice about, is they're giving advice about the dating game. How to angle yourself better. Right? Don't come on too strong. Mm. Don't tell the truth too much. Don't reveal your real feelings (laughs) too much. Be a little cool. It's basically, you know, stick to the middle. Don't be too much. Don't be too little. Be a good mellow Mm -hmm. yellow, you know. Why just enough, but, like, not too much? Right. Okay, so you want me to lie. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do. Lie a bunch. No, I'm writing it down, by the way. No, no, you lie just the right amount. Which is a bunch. Okay, sure. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'll put it in a box, you know. It looks like I'm saying lie a brunch, but lie a bunch. Lie a bunch, yeah. That's a get, think what I'm getting from this question. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. A, yeah, that's if you want to play. Which, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, it's not fair to play games with people. But I guess if they're playing the games with you, you do you, buddy, and I'll do what you're doing as well. <laughs> One thing that I found, which I think might be a stereotypical, like, dating thing, or it's just something that, like, people pound into the guys' heads, is, like, open the doors for the girls, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. But I hate that. I don't know why, but I absolutely hate when a guy's like, oh, let me open this car door for you. Because I'm like... Why don't you just go in at the same time and then we can leave earlier? 
<laughs> you know, like, I can get in myself. It's not like my hands are full. Yeah. Even if it's my hands were full, no, 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 let me open my own damn door. That's how mm-hmm. I feel sometimes. Slash all the time. Because of both date, both of the last dates I was on, the guy opened the door for me. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those things that to me, not that I, I don't have an experience of people trying to do that for me really, but it kind of pings under the whole, like, don't swear in front of girls because they're like too delicate or something. Right. Or like, and people will be like, oh no, it's just because you're like trying to be respectful. That's a bunch of crap. It's just mm-hmm. because you're like, oh, they're too delicate. Yeah. So. And like, this other one, the guy paying. Which honestly, I don't mind about that one. Because I'm a broke ass college student. <laughs> I like the paying back and forth thing though. But really see, in a lot of situations. If I was to go on multiple dates with people, I would so offer to pay for them. Because I think, like, it should be equal. I don't think it needs to be, like, every single time you guys split the bill. Right. But, like, you pay... See, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so he pays for this. The next time we go out, I'll pay for this. Right. I like that because it's, like, a gift back and forth yeah. thing. It's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. So, but I feel like cool. there are many. Also, I don't usually expect people to pay for me. Mm-hmm. Like, guys, I'm like, okay, like, it's a date, so they probably will. But I also don't expect them to. Do you know what's also part of the game? Is flirting. Oh, yeah. I don't really understand flirting. <sighs> I'm a bad person to talk about flirting. I don't know how that works. I go back and forth on whether I'm a good flirter. Because I feel like I have a very flirty personality. But then I also think, wait, no, it's just friendly. (laughs) It's not me flirting. I have a hard time figuring out the difference between flirty and friendly. I'm the kind of person who my teasing you is me being flirty, I think. Or, like, you know, I do those touching a little bit, you know? Yeah, like I guess I've never brushing. seen you try to flirt. No, you haven't. Because I do it in the comfort of my bedroom. <laughs> um, I mean, they're already in your bedroom, so how much flirting yeah. does it really require? It's usually, like, flirting afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really only if I'm, like, into the person. But, yeah, because... I don't know. I, if there is somebody that I'm into, I smile a lot more. Mm-hmm. But it's also usually when I'm at work that I find guys attractive. So then I like can't really like go full like flirting and like showing off my cleavage <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And in class, I'm more serious. Or just panic. I don't know. And I don't really do... I guess I kind of do a bit of flirting in text. Yeah, that's a different thing. But that's different. Yeah, I would call that something else. I mean, it's still... It's, you know, it's it's the art of messaging someone. to Right. But also, that this is interesting because I think that you... We know people on the other end of this problem, but now I think that you have enough experience that you're now on the other end that sometimes what some people view as part of the dating game is kind of editing your past dating experience. Yeah. What do you tell your current partner about your dating experience? If you're fairly... I feel like it seems to me that the sweet spot is like kind of inexperienced like you still had something going on before Mm -hmm. this isn't your first person for anything but you don't have a huge list of people right we have a friend that or we we know a couple of people that are a little that they're not very experienced Mm -mm. and they i think they feel pressure to not tell guys that yeah like yeah, they really feel like they should have more experience, I feel like. Mm-hmm. 
So then they are worried of what a person's going to say to them or how they're going to react. And for me, like, I was always like, just tell people where you're at, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, say they hadn't been kissed, okay? And I hadn't been kissed. And they wouldn't tell people when they had, like, the person that they kissed, they didn't say it was their first kiss. And then they were shocked when I was asked, when I got my first kiss, if that, because the person was like, was that your first kiss? Which they already knew. And I was like, yes. And they were like, you told him that day? Like, what? Why? I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah. I want it to happen, but I wasn't ashamed of it or that it was happened later in life than most people. Yeah. It's actually it's interesting now though because you you haven't ever hid this information, Mm-mm. but you have started I don't you've started to show hesitation in the fact about telling people your experience now I have. for the opposite reason because yeah. you've been with so many people. And that's enough, been very recent. And yeah, and, and enough that some people have not had a, a good reaction, reaction. Yeah. to it. Also, I will say with my first, with my last boyfriend, he was my first boyfriend. I didn't tell him he was my first boyfriend. He doesn't know that. But I also didn't, like, I told him I didn't have that much experience with guys, mm-hmm. but he never really asked that many questions about it. So I think, it, and I wasn't going to be about, like, this is my first boyfriend, like, oh my god. Yeah, it wasn't really that type of relationship. No, it really wasn't. <laughs> so, yeah, but now it's really gotten to the point where I have some hesitations. And, like, I would tell somebody if they asked me. Like, I had a coworker ask me what my number was today, and I told her. And I didn't get, like... A bad reaction from her, but it also was kind of like, I don't know how necessary it is for everybody to know this information. You know, like, if you were to ask me, I would tell you, but I don't know if I want to really, like, give it out to everybody. Right, and I still think that if you're if you're in another relationship, I think you're going to tell your first serious boyfriend that they're your first relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fact that it wasn't that serious did make a difference. I agree. So. And, yeah. And I will tell them, like, everything. But I really, like, I had a guy, and I told him my number, and he was a little bit like, what? What? And I told him the amount of time it was in, and he's like, we should have had this conversation beforehand. Yeah. And I didn't like that reaction. Well, he He was also very, he had, his, okay, his number was similar enough to yours, but he said that he had regretted like 75% of the times that he'd ever had sex. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot. That's a whole lot. Right. And so I think really he was like taking that and putting it on you. He regretted when he had sex and so he was thinking that you could possibly be like him and that you would later regret it. And I think that's a I think if you're doing anything but having like two or three relationships where you're like monogamous with one person then you're going to find people who think that you're probably just like going too crazy right yeah and like gonna regret it later or like not living like a fulfilling life or something Mm -hmm. which and also i look at these tinder experiences as experiences and if i don't have like the best time with a guy then it's not like I should regret it it's like oh we didn't work 
out because we weren't compatible and then I think why weren't we compatible okay it's because of these things I can know this for the future about myself and what I need more of or less of you know I don't think of it as oh this wasn't good I better regret this yeah I shouldn't have done it so day if you were to meet just a poor young freshman okay let's just call it a f- call them female just to yeah. make it easy okay what advice would you give them about dating on tinder that you maybe wanted to know you wish you would have known you'd know now um what would I would you tell? say swipe right on the people that you are actually into don't because I did a lot of being like oh this guy is so attractive better swipe left he's never going to be into me (laughs) no 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 swipe right because you know you never know who's going to actually be into you or not um I would say create a profile that you're confident about as well like get good photos of yourself have a friend take photos of you in a bikini while you're on vacation. It works great. <laughs> um, and then when you're actually, like, talking to people, don't overthink it. Because, honestly, it's Tinder. Like, you could say anything. It's fine. Um, Tell them you're eating ice cream naked. Even when you're just in your I dorm room. I don't think I've done that one. Oh, well, I've wait, done that with I? somebody. I have done that. Because I had something... Yeah. Even if you're wearing like 10 layers of clothes and you're just... I need to do that one again. Hanging out with a bunch of people in the completely least sexy way. Right. Just tell people you're <laughs> naked eating ice cream. That's a good tip. Um, Yeah. Don't be afraid to get a little flirty. I think. I just want the whole freshman class to be sitting in the dorms texting people on tinder (laughs) saying that i'm naked eating ice cream and the same person who doesn't go to evergreen to receive all these messages at the same time (laughs) and wonder if it's something in the water (laughs) oh can that happen that's just my goal listeners please make this happen for me dagny needs this i need this in my life yeah um And then also, like, don't be afraid to meet up with people. Because, like, being nervous about meeting up with somebody is good and healthy. But if you don't have a good feeling about it, then don't. Because I've definitely had it where, like, I have plans to meet up with somebody. And then I'm just not feeling it. Whether it be that person or if I'm stressed too much. And then I just cancel. Don't give it too much thought. You know? Yeah, as a person who would be terrible at using Tinder and never sees Tinder in my life, I would say meet up with actual people yeah. in person. I Don't let it stay just some online bubble that you feel like you can only succeed texting people on Tinder because that's incredibly low stakes and mm-hmm. you can do better than just texting people on Tinder. For a while, I had a Tinder that I only messaged people on. I didn't, like, meet up with anybody And then I got rid of Tinder because it was just becoming this game where I talk to people and they never see them. And I didn't like that. So I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't get Tinder again until I was willing to meet up with people. And I think being able to meet up with people has made it a much better app. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Because, like, you receive benefits from it and then they're on their merry way. (laughs) <laughs> or they you gotta get those your, benefits. Or they stay in your life for a little bit. I mean, there's multiple people that I haven't just seen once. Yeah. But there's also a few that, like, I saw them, and now they're bye-bye. Can I just say that there's there's a term that I really think is hilarious because it's so bad, but so it's so funny to me. Ready yeah. for this? It's the Forever Night Stand. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Because it's 
it's two things that are just very different, right? It's like spending forever with someone versus the one night stand. Right. But it's a forever night stand. <laughs> yeah. I Find have... your forever night stand. On <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. As far as tips for like dating goes, I would say don't expect anything. Don't ex- Keep your expectations low. Absolutely. Like, don't expect them to hold your hand. Don't expect them to give you a kiss on the first night. Don't, ex- well, maybe expect them to open the door since they always do. <laughs> oh. Um, you expect them to be a decent human. Just let that go for once. Yeah. If they tell you they don't like animals and they only eat fish carcasses, carcass shit. Carcasses? Carcasses. Do they support the cat serial killer? Everyone oh has God. flaws. Right? Well, Just stay at them once, twice, maybe forever. Do they have a sh- small obsession with collecting lamps that aren't floor lamps? What are those kinds of lamps called? Table, table lamps? lamps? If they have oh an obsession with collecting table lamps with a variety of small animals on the sh- lamp shades, you know? Roosters, pigs, Everyone's got to have a hobby. Yeah, it's totally... Totally fine. Just go on a date with them. <laughs> yeah. Do they tell you that they're living in the dorms but seem to look over 30 years old? It's fine. Some people have bad genetics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's the apartments. They have over 30 housing. There you go. Also, this is what I did before my last date, and I think it worked pretty well. Except a couple things real hit home because I was freaking out about the date. But listen to The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yes. This yes. is a book. You could read it. You could read it. That but since you're well. freaking out before your date, you're not going to be able to focus on reading. No. So just let the word fuck wash over you again and again and again mm-hmm. until you feel calm with life. Yeah. Actually, though, on a realistic note for what I've actually done... Yeah. For this is meditate. Oh, yeah. It's be- I feel like meditating is, it's kind of, it's a skill, but it's also kind of a hobby. If you're not into it, it's not going to be very helpful. Right. I've cleaned, I think, before. Take a few deep breaths. I clean a lot when I get nervous. Look at yourself in the mirror and think, no one will ever love this face. <laughs> That's a really good thought. Listen to some, like, really hard rap. As you put sort of like pixie style makeup on to make yourself look like a small, unassuming, and innocent sort of woodland creature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just some advice I have. From, you know. That's what I'm going to do next time. Or do I do it already? No. No. I need to get better at it. I do like my sparkles though. Sparkles. Highlights are beautiful. Yes. If the answer, if you have a question to yourself, is there enough glitter on my body to go on the state? The answer is just no. No. Dump it in your hair. It's not enough glitter until you have at least three layers covering your entire body. No. Maybe five. Maybe it doesn't need to be like a solid layer, but I'm thinking like sort of in your chest area. Something that doesn't bring attention to your boobs or your neck, but just an in-between spot. <laughs> just, like, right by your collarbone? Yeah. Okay. Just like kind a straight... of patchy. Like you oh, have... a patchy. Like, yeah. Like, spots. Like, you kind of got, like, some sort of, like, wilderness, like, raccoon disease, but it sparkles. Right. And where is it? It's right on your chest. Right, but not... Your cleavage. No, nothing near it. Cover that, that up. I Definitely mean, cover that honestly, up. Honestly, get those boobs back in there. No one wants to see them. Wear something loose and roll around in the woods before you head out. Mm. Just to make yourself feel confident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We're being serious about that last one. Yeah. But yeah, dating. It's... It happens. Ooh, I've got a great tip. Emerge from some sort of bush when your date pulls up, wherever they're pulling up. Find the nearest bush, hide in it, and then that's where you come out. Right. When they've pulled up. Or 
if they're pulling, if they're like, okay, where should I meet you? Be like, the bush. They're gonna be like, that's bush. You're that gonna be sounds like, sexual. You know that bush by F lot. <laughs> and then they'll just be walking around looking for a bush, and you just pop out and be like, you found me. <laughs> oh my god. You could tell them you live in the bush. You need to get, here's what you need to do, is you need to have the really quality type of friends. These are hard to find, but if you can find these friends, these friends who will watch out the window for when your date arrives and yell embarrassing things out the window, like, hi. (laughs) Tagni has wanted to do this from the past, like, two or three guys that I've either gone on a date with or, like, invited into the home, where she calls out, she's like, hey, like, Henry, how you doing? And maybe they've, like, talked to me about something, so they've, like, say they've said that their hair is, like, really messy, and she'll be like, hey, Henry, your hair looks real messy or real good or something like that. And, like, it's obvious we've talked about it. Yeah, see, I I think it'd really just enhance the experience if I, see, we have, like, we have a kitchen window, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have a screen, so if I open it, if I could just stick the half of my body out the window as I wave at the driveway at this guy. Right. Maybe, like, eating some sort of food. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I think it'd be better if you just stick your head out, eat the food, and just stare at them. Yeah. Or I could just wave. Or just wave. See, you like to take a friendly approach. I'm like, be creepy. Except don't, Agni. Don't do any of these things. See, I'm friendly until they come up to the door. Then I'm the cat. Mm, who yeah. looks around the corner and, like, hisses and runs away. Right. Antisocial cat. This is definitely actually what I do when people come over as I run to my room. She's literally been like, oh, he's here got up and ran to her room (laughs) and then I'm just left there to wait till he walks up to the door. Yeah, that's my real, it's a real strategy. Either that or she just sits on the couch and is like hanging out and then they try to talk to her. I'm like, what are you doing, buddy? One of your guys tried to talk to me. He shook your hand. He came over and he was like, hi, and he like asked my name and shook my hand and I gotta say... That's like some regular friendly human behavior, but I was not prepared. No. At all. And I was like, I think I was really unfriendly and I was like, "Oh, I did I did a bad job being friendly toward him because I wasn't expecting it. I thought he was going to like sit down right next I to know, me and like me ask too. me my life story. Yeah. He got really close. I was like, "Hi." I was kind of like, "Oh, what are you doing there, buddy?" Like I thought we were I was just going to usher you to my room. And I was like, so I was like, we can go to my room. And then I was like, unless you want to talk to her. I know. <laughs> you said it so, like, you were just very, it wasn't, it wasn't harsh, but you were like, yeah, so we can go to my room unless you want to talk to her. And I was like, I'm not available to be talked to I right know. now. Like, and was bye. Like, they're boring, but okay. Um. Yeah, usually I'm pretty good at doing the, like, oh, that's my roommate. Okay, let's go to my room. Yeah. And I don't know how the guys feel about that, but they're probably saying, cool, they're not going to be, like, pounded with questions mm-hmm. or something. So I don't ask any questions, like, let's get to know Henry. Who's really Henry <laughs> in your heart? <laughs> oh, Please also don't. because, it, you know what I also... Hmm tell you that I want to do is I want to do that you know that whole trope of like the mom with like a pan of cookies yeah like knock on your door and be like hi guys how's it going just made these cookies and like offer them to you (laughs) yeah oh yeah careful what time you come in at I know I'm sure you'd be able to figure it out just like strategic see here's here's when I'd like to walk in ready as right as like shirts are off but pants are still on oh okay that's what I feel like is maximum embarrassment it's that's... the most it's what do you call that when it kills the mood buzzkill no um 
don't know. I feel like I know the I word. I like there's a word for that. Anyway, there's a word. It doesn't matter. Something like that. That's when it. That's because it just really just halt the whole right? thing in its tracks. I'll be like, yeah. I just didn't answer the door, but I knew you were just hanging out in here, so I knew it would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> just a hand of a plate Oh my gosh. That would be... That would be bad. Also, be, that's like a quick time to come in at. You gotta really time it. Really wow. time it, yeah. Yeah. I'll just... Yeah. Of course, we have the freedom to do that in the dorms. I just don't even know. That would be just terrible. So terrible. You probably shouldn't trash the dorms so much people live there. The dorms are... Honestly, I'm glad I lived in the dorms the first year. Oh, me too. So, yeah. It kind of sucks, but also it was like the best transition period for me. And like to live there. It's great for friends. Oh, yeah. So... We'll be ending our podcast with a question for our lovely listeners. Today's question, what would it take for you to go on a blind date? You can find us wherever you found this podcast and on our YouTube channel, Basically Misled. Hey, if you have questions you want us to answer on the show or stuff you want us to talk about, email us using the email below. Or comment. Or comment because this is a YouTube channel. You can comment. Yeah. Comment anywhere. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and good, good luck with your future endeavors. endeavors.